Hi, Davy again. I hope you're doing great. So, in my previous videos, I talk about side effect. I, I explain the, 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 the theoretical part of it, and then the, uh, another one. I, I, I in another video, I cover the fact that um, the way you will you will use it in JavaScript, the way you can see it in JavaScript when you write code, and then you will be like, "Eh, but David, that's a third video on side effect," and I will say, "Yeah." That is right, it's the third one. Because side effects are awesome. You need them for your app to work really well. You need them, otherwise your app are actually not doing much, really. Are you inter interacting with uh, lo uh, local storage, session storage? You're doing side effect. Are you interacting with, um, with uh, 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 um, API outside of, your, of your, your app? You're dealing with side effect. And you need these APIs, otherwise you live in the world, in your own island, and you're not communicating with the world. So side effects are important. However, side effect, are not a native thing there is no native way uh, or let me put it this way um, uh, in this video i'm actually trying to bring you the concept of side effect from an ascal programming language perspective uh, ascal uh, you know the name hackages comes from the programming language ascal okay yeah so i love ascal and some of the things that i learned many years ago it's the fact that ascal has um and a, a native way to deal with side effect. Think of it this way: you have a you have a route, a normal route, and then that that uh, that route there is is the thing that people would call pure function and so on and so forth, right? So, but as I just explained, if there is no side effect, nothing really happens in your app. It's 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 just a, it, it, it's it's in its own island by default. But then side effect is basically a way to say, hey, I'm gonna go a little bit outside of that route, do some operation, and then circle back to to rejoin that right that 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 that, 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 that route, um, without really impacting the entire app flow. In, in the Haskell world, you can think of the IO operation. So you have the IO monad that's gonna take care of dealing with these kind of things and then uh, and then making sure that your application is still working um, in the in, in in the way that is not uh, uh, too damaging for your for your for your application, right? And that's also why people say if you write code in Haskell, if you, your code is working. While you're building it and everything, you're sure that you're not gonna have um, you, you're not gonna have bugs when you move it to different environment, different production environment, because it's just the way the language is designed. I might be wrong, because I haven't done Haskell for many years, but that's basically the fundamental part that I got from working with it at some point. Now. How about JavaScript? Because you're like, David, why are you talking about JavaScript? We talk, we, why are you talking about Haskell? We're, we're in JavaScript here. I'm talking about Haskell because that's basically the, the place where um, uh, you get an inspiration from pure functional programming concept. Now, in the JavaScript world, what we do, uh, basically here I have an example of code where um, we have uh, an interface for users that has age in months and then name and then we have a function find user age by name, right? That receive a user list then by name and then it's gonna return a number, right? So keep that in mind. We just have some input and then uh, uh, an output that is a, 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 a number basically. So we have the fact that if the user lands, so if the array is empty, we just return there are no users, and if um, the uh, and then otherwise we just call the find method and then we look into the the, the find method and and then if there if there is no user we throw uh, user not found otherwise we just return the age. And however, one of the thing we're doing here is on line nineteen and on line fifteen we're throwing errors. So. When you throw an error, you're going to see uh, right below that when you throw an error, your app breaks, actually. Your app breaks. So let's take the first one. The first one's going to return one because, well, uh, 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 Remo name is in, is in there and, and then you get, you get uh, 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 the second one is going to throw that error. By the way, you see, there is a name here called Remo. The example I'm showing you right now, let me show you quickly here a, a good uh, uh, shout out to Remo. The example I'm showing you right now, I took it from 
and it's an extract of the book Hands-On Functional Programming with TypeScript by my friend Remo who lives in Dublin. The, the guy is amazing. He has written that book to basically teach us um, how we can leverage TypeScript to write more functional code. It's an amazing book. I read it uh, a, a few years ago. I've used that in many places. I offer that to a lot of people and I'm going to offer five copies of that book to uh, 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 the, the uh, one of the fir the five first hundred subscriber I'm gonna get on 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 in the next few in the next few weeks. So the only thing you have to do is you go there you on on my on on the YouTube channel you basically uh, 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 yeah subscribe to the, the the video do that and then you get um you you go in the comment and you basically say I want that book and what I'm going to do is to make sure that. Uh, that book is delivered to your email whenever uh, uh, we 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 close the loop uh, of that game. But if if you if if you don't want me to send you the book, go on any any platform there, Amazon or whatever. You're gonna find the book. It's really amazing. And Remo, good job. And um, uh, yeah, let me go back and explain you a little bit more uh, the code. So. Here is the example here where we were talking about the fact that this is these uh, throws and that regardless of your app it's gonna it's gonna give a bad experience to your user right so throwing it's a natural mechanism that's what we've been doing in javascript for many years so as i said asco has a different way of dealing with it however in javascript there is something that is that can be used to actually avoid that explosion. What I mean explosion is, you probably saw it, from the moment I uncomment, I, 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 I uncomment this one, <laughs> the thing literally exploded because it was like, hey, there is a, uh, um, uh, there is a, a, a throw here and so on and so forth, so, right? Boof. But you can curve that, that explosion, you can control it, you can make sure that the, the, the landing is smooth for everyone. And how do you do that? There is one mechanism that is used in every single library that takes care of this kind of mechanism. If you think of Redux Tunk or Redux Saga, um, NGRX and so on and so forth, they have something they do to make sure that you have a soft landing. You see what I mean? No? Yeah, you got it right, promises, right? So let's do this. So we're gonna make sure that um, instead of using to, uh, to throw, we're gonna use promises. And promises, once again, they have something unique, which says, I'm gonna deliver you one video a day for the entire month of June that talks about functional programming. That's a promise. And each day you just wait, you just there, you wait for it, and it doesn't matter at some point it's going to arrive. If it doesn't arrive, then you're still gonna receive a message that says, error, we didn't, uh, we didn't deliver on it, <laughs> the, the promise is being rejected, right? The, the concept I'm talking about here first is real because I'm delivering one video a day for the entire month of July, 2022, but it's also true in the sense like a promise, even if it doesn't come, come back with a, res a positive result, it will still come back with a result. And you just have, you're gonna have to unwrap it and then deal with the, the, the response that's in there. So let's do that over here. So instead of returning a number, what we're going to do, we're going to return a promise, right? And for now, I don't really know what, uh, which kind of promise uh, uh, I'm gonna return and, and that's okay. So what we do here, I'm going to comment out this. Um, Let's make sure that we we get it we get it right here. So comment out, and then return a promise, and then reject uh, what we have here. And I can just pass that new error uh, like this, right? So uh, and and the error here we can just pass exactly uh, the same message uh, uh, like this, right? So that's already one way of dealing with it. And then once you go there, you're gonna see now below, it doesn't crash, it doesn't just go crazy. What it does, it gives me a way to go here and then unwrap it manually, 
right and then here i can do uh, tons of things I, I know that i have an error that comes in here and i can do something with that 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 error but i call it error but actually it's more like a response and i can do something with that 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 with that with that response right that's the main idea so how do you do that over here same thing you just uh, copy this and then we're gonna uh, uh, put it over here and and then the, the message is a little bit different now uh, user and uh, not found right right so get, get exactly the same thing and then same thing here you take this and then you say you promise that this one has uh, uh, been resolved okay and um, when it's when it's being resolved you just have to return you just have to pass that information right there and then you see right below it says then one so if you go here you are just gonna receive that that information there but in both cases in in, in, in in both cases what you get is just uh, the fact that yeah well um, the the uh, um, the, the application won't, won't crash on you and you have a, 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 a soft landing promises is basically that monad in 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 an io monad in in uh, askel that makes sure that it does the work outside of the normal flow like a side effect and then it lends that it lends the result properly in your application whenever that result is there does that make sense okay that video there is was probably a little bit long but once again, um, side effects are really important in any applications, right? And as I, I mentioned a, a few times, the, the, the short, the, the, uh, the entire month of July, I'm releasing a video about functional programming and then make sure that these videos are uh, useful to you. And well, listen, uh, this one was about, it was the last one about side effect. And the next one, I'm going to be covering things like uh, piping, composition, and so on and so forth. So don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. You take care.